Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Inside Battlefield. My name is Tom, Community Manager for Battlefield, and today we're back with another episode where we talk about the state of gameplay, with the focus today being on weapons. So last week we sat down with uh, the vehicles team, and today I'm joined by Adon and Ross to talk weapons. Welcome guys, how's it going? Pretty good. Hello, real good. This uh, so Ross, I think it's you know third, fourth time on a podcast. It's uh, you're 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 considered yeah. a veteran now. Is that um, is that all it takes? <laughs> yes, just show up and and, and it's done. It. Adon, this is your first podcast. So how are you feeling? Yes, indeed. Well, I try to do my best. Um, feeling good. Yeah, excited. Feeling like it's uh, it's good to have a chance to to get in touch with the community yeah actually so yeah agreed so it's been a while since we spoke about weapons i think on the podcast i think the last time was before season five when we um announced all the changes that were coming to vault weapons and just a little review of of the changes taking place there so you know we're 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 in season six now but before we dive in um let's start with a quick intro from both of you both of you again um let's start with uh, ross and then I don't. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm Ross. I've been uh, at uh, Dice for a long time now. I guess seven, seven, eight years. So uh, I'm the design director on um, on uh, 2042 on Live, and uh, my role is to try and help the team, give them some uh, direction here and there, and uh, yeah, respond to the community and uh, try and represent them. Yeah. Awesome. Um, what about you, Adan? Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Adan. Uh, I've worked at DICE since 2016, kind of, I think when Ross joined, somewhere around, around that time, maybe a bit earlier. But uh, I had a bit of a break in between then and now. Um, so I rejoined and I became part of the weapons team uh, in 2042 a bit more than a year ago, I think. Uh, just just a year ago, I think. Uh, maybe a, a month and a year. Um before that, I worked on BF1, BF1 DLC, and BF5, but I worked uh, mostly with vehicles, AI, and single player. So it was it was very different. So last uh, last week we started with an easy question for vehicles. So we're gonna do the same for weapons. Um, how are both of you feeling about the current state of gunplay? Um, and I guess. Who wants to go first? I can I can give my perspective as uh, someone a bit newer on the team. Like yep, um, yep. So I've only seen the change in the last year or so, uh, a bit more than that. Um, I think we're doing pretty well. Uh, there has been a lot of change through the year, uh, and at times it wasn't so good. Um, like it's taken us some time, sometimes to really find the the, the good spot for some things and. For the changes Sweet yeah spot. um but i'm i'm pretty happy with how things are right now overall uh, i feel like there's uh, the roster of weapons is, is healthier than it was before um there the meta is not really like just one weapon or two uh depends on the map a bit i guess but uh overall there's a lot of viable weapons yeah. i think um you see people talk about a lot of favorites so that that feels really good and I think, yeah. What do you think the problems were that we that we faced maybe earlier with Complay that, that we now feel uh, happy about? I think there was a lot of, um, for example, with the vault weapons, there was a lot of uh, disconnect between those weapons and the other weapons. The, um, there was a, a gap there in, in the stats, in the handling. Um, so it, it didn't really feel cohesive. And I think that's something that we have worked on a lot. And that's one of the things like you can take almost any weapon in almost any situation and feel like you're going to be able to do well with it. Um, and I think also the new additions have been, have been really fun. I think that's helped as well, the new weapons. Awesome. So I think to, just to summarize where we came from uh, within the past years that maybe, you know, we we ended up with a lot of weapons because we added a, a bunch of vault weapons or so the weapons we brought over from Portal to All Out Warfare. But ultimately the, the full roster between weapons wasn't competitive. Some were just, there were 
like a few outliers and we saw many players use those specific guns. The vault weapons were lacking the all out warfare attachment, so they couldn't compete necessarily. And I think, um, especially during season five, we, uh, we added a bunch of changes to, I guess, resolve um, the outliers to make, make sure it's a competitive roster all around. Is that, is that a nice summary for my I end? think so, yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of effort to add new content and then um, maybe the consistency wasn't there, but uh, yeah, there's been a lot of work put into making that better. Awesome. Uh, and I, like personally, season five was a very exciting time because we knew for a while that, um, you know, we were going to bring uh, back attachments, etc., to Vault Weapons and we, we couldn't talk about it for a bit. Um, so season five was the time. And yeah, personally, look back on that fondly, um, but I would love to hear from you as well, Ross. What's your overall take yeah, on, you know, where we came from with Gunplay? Because you were around with launch, uh, at yeah. launch. To now. I think... I think it was, I think it was two things. Firstly, it was like expanding the content. So, you know, adding vault weapons, bringing new attachments in, things like the thermals, um, that was a big one. So, um, when you, when you add a lot, it, it causes, ine inevitably causes balance issues. Yep. So then the other thing has been kind of fixing those balance issues. And I think at first we had, we had like, we, you know, you can go, we can look at the data, right? And you could see that there were very few weapons sometimes that were the, the meta. Yep. Um, I remember the, the days of the PP and <laughs> um, that was, that was pretty brutal. Right. So I think it took us a while to kind of um, flatten out some of the mechanics and make the weapons feel a bit more connected to one another. So I think that's kind of where we are now. I think we're always going to have a meta. Yep. Um, things are going to always bubble up. But uh, yeah, I think now we're in a place where we can uh, say, yeah, things things feel like they're all moving in the same direction. And yeah, like Adan says, if you look at the, the um, player picks, it's much broader than it was when we launched. So yeah. Yep. And of course, like we, we have the internal numbers. We can see which guns people use, um, and I think we can see more, even like which modes or maybe or how long they use the weapon. Um, and that, to summarize, we won't go into like the full numbers for all the weapons. But from our perspective, it looks healthy. It's it's balanced. People, there's a wide variety of weapons that people use. There's no major outliers or guns that are just never used is, is that correct yeah overall pretty much yeah there's there's things that yeah there's things that pop up like i say okay. um but uh, like overall yeah we see players like dip in dip out and again like uh sometimes you can really feel like some you can you can kind of feel it right you you just get killed by something often and I go back to that, to the days of the PP, it was you know, I just everywhere. I forgot about that for a second until you I mentioned just, it, but that yeah, used to yeah. shred. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what keeps yes. me up at night. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so so now it's like, it's it's easier. And, and, and when, when you've got like more of a, a, a generally balanced range of content, it, it um, yeah, you get less of those outliers popping up and it becomes a bit easier and, and then you can start to, I think now we're at the point where we're really starting to, to get into like the nuanced detail of, of saying, Hey, we really yep. want to go into this particular thing and give that a lift or pull it back. So, uh, yeah, it makes our life a little bit easier. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I, yeah, I completely agree. Now we, we are, we have the chance to, to be a bit more creative and, and polish a bit more and go a bit beyond what we've done before. How would you say, um, so this is a follow-up question from my end, then we now have six seasons worth of new weapons, including um, the vault weapons, you know, the, the portal weapons. I guess every time we introduce new weapons, you probably see players shifting to, you know, using the new ones or maybe... Uh, we make some balance changes so the, the meta shifts, they, they start using new guns more. But how is it for you as a team 
to uh, to maintain that balance because there's a lot of weapons. Um, every time we change one thing, for example, um, you know, could be a gun itself, could be headshot damage multipliers for ARs, SMGs. There's a lot of changes we can make. So how does that work for you as a team to to maintain that balance, especially since we have such a big roster now? Easy, really easy. Um, well, there's there's a lot of sources for this. Like I would say a big part of it is you're just going to theory craft in your head. You have to really try to visualize how it's going to play out before you do the changes. Uh, we also have, of course, spreadsheets, a bunch of them. And, you know, we can look at numbers there to see if there are any outliers um, that are problematic. Sometimes that doesn't really tell you the whole story um, with certain things like dispersion, a little variance in, in a number. Um, it can really, really change things. So it's all, you can't really rely on that 100%. Um, so sometimes we just have to jump in and do the changes um, and then really look at what people feel like when they are playing, look at the analytics, um, look at just the really good players, but also the not so good players, uh, just watch them play, uh, play yourself with the controller, with the mouse, uh, with in, in many different situations and see, see how it really plays out and then try to pull it back, push it more. Um, but me personally, I, I try to avoid doing, uh, really large changes. I prefer going a bit like 5% here, 7% here, which is something that, um, Historically, sometimes we haven't we have been a bit too aggressive with some changes, I think. Um, and I think it's a bit easier um, for us to communicate the changes when they're a bit smaller. So it's uh, like some people get a bit scared when they see our update notes. Like we have, uh, for example, a 6.2. Uh, we are reducing the... Which we will talk about later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like... <laughs> For example, the VHX is getting a little uh, tweak to the dispersion, but it's quite small. Like, I think a lot of people won't be able to tell. Um, it's just enough to make a difference, right? Over a hundred matches, for example, it's going to take it down like a little bit. Yeah. So it's a bit more like how we feel the weapon should be. Um, yeah. So we have the numbers for like all the weapons and spreadsheets, but it doesn't tell the full story because, you know, you can see a dispersion number on the spreadsheet, but it doesn't really tell you how it feels in game. Then it requires a lot of testing as well, because as you mentioned, you don't see in one match, you don't really feel a dispersion change in one match. You maybe need to play a hundred. So there's a lot of testing on our end involved as well. And I sometimes feel like a broken record for saying this, but of course we play test in the yeah. studio daily but it's never the same as when we test that skill with players, for example, you know. For sure. Our, our own teams could, could, could test the new weapon changes, but as soon as players go hands-on, it's, it's thousands of players racking up hundreds of thousands of hours on very short notice. Uh, and that's when we really see um, the changes, how they, how they play out over a longer period of time with, with, at skill, which is, um, I guess, an interesting discussion to have because you mentioned on, you know, the spreadsheet doesn't tell you everything. So testing, seeing it in the hands of players, we've shifted to making smaller changes now, as you mentioned, to, um, you know, for for example, if, if a change is too much, um, you know, that, that could immediately exactly. imbalance the game. So we're playing it a little bit safe for now, but we're keeping a close eye on it. Is that, is yeah, that a good summary? Sure. Of, yeah, no, the, the play this point is... is okay. Like no matter how much we play this, uh, there's so many combinations, different play styles and exploits. You know, yep. when you're playing in the real world, you want to really, really win. You're not just like play testing. So that, that changes things for sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious about your thoughts as well, Ross. Yeah, I, I think, I think like there's so many different ways that we can get information and like the danger is that you only balance around like playtest feedback. You know, we have our yep. Slack channel and, you know, you'll get someone say like this, this thing is OP or like, I don't like this thing. And 
again, that's you, you're in a, in a play test. Like the feeling is just different um, to when you know you're sat down on a sofa and you've got like an hour and you just want to like level up or you just want to get like the next thing. It, your your mindset is completely different. And and again, like when you look at the data. That's just another part of the puzzle that you need to put together. So we'll often sit down, talk about all of the things, get different opinions. I think that's the important thing. And to be honest, it's like a big part of this is that feeling of perception. Um, like even if the stats tell you, like they can be really defined and say like this is what's happening. It doesn't matter if the perception within the community is not that so yeah there's there's we 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 oftentimes it's like uh like uh, just trying to find out like exactly what we feel the truth of something is and then responding to it and then of course like the thing with development is that you're reacting to the live service feedback and play test feedback and data and analytics but then at the same time we have things in our own backlog that we're trying to get to um that we've been thinking of you know maybe months before so it's kind of like a combination of all those things yeah it's fun <laughs> <laughs> keeps us busy it is uh, like it, it, yeah. it genuinely is because like i say like and there's like the the thing that i love about weapons is that the feedback can be like so defined like you can be you can see like a comment from somebody online and even if it's you know uh, it, it could be a really detailed breakdown of, you know, their weapon experience over the last six months, or it could be a side-eyed comment saying that this weapon is trash, but like you can kind of get that feeling really immediately and respond to it. Um, it's, it's a lot kind of murkier with other things like vehicles and, um, and like game mode stuff. So yep. yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's cool to when we sit down and we have all of this information and then we can talk about it. Yep. So I think, uh, you know, it's interesting as, as a player, you, you get an update, you have your weapon, the weapon is now different. You tell us how it feels, but for us, there's, you know, as we discussed here, there's a lot more at play, play testing, spreadsheets, numbers, how do the other weapons perform? Um, you know, there's a lot of that goes into actually getting those changes into the players' hands and reviewing, which I think is hopefully interesting content uh, context for our listeners to have. I'd like to move on to, um, you know, a, a recap of all the changes we've made in the year because it's actually been a lot. Like a lot has happened, you know. And if you if you're just playing the game and having fun, maybe sometimes you forget. But it's Let's let's take a look at where we came from. So um, yeah, Don. Let's uh, you know we made a nice little list <laughs> for a bunch of the changes we made. Should we just uh, should we just dive in and start start yeah, recapturing sure. some of those? Um, yeah, I, I had to make a list because there are so many things that you you, you can forget about yeah. a lot of stuff. You're so focused on the things that you're working on now that the things from six months ago feel like they didn't even exist. Um, so. I joined exactly a year ago um, and I, so my first season where I actually did something useful was uh, season four um, or where I actually designed and created something. Um, and uh, so I would, for me, I really enjoyed working on a lot of the new weapons. Uh, so the ones that I worked on were the AC9, the RPT, the GEW. Uh, the BFB, the VHX, and the L9. So a lot of good good stuff in there. I'm really happy with how they turn out. Um, and I also worked on the other weapons, but they I didn't really design them from the ground up, so I can't really speak to to those in the same way. But I think what's what's your favorite, by the way, for for the ones my favorite. Know, well, personally, I really like LMGs. I'm a simple man. I have a lot of bullets. I can shoot a lot. <laughs> I will kill something. No, but I I like playing with LMGs. I like playing a bit statically uh, often. So I like the RPT a lot. Uh, it it's not OP, by the way. No matter what you say. No, but it it was a bit 
OP, but I think it's it's in a good spot now. Um, but I really like the BFB as well. Um, that was like really fun to to make it uh, to put it into the game, and I think a lot of people have have enjoyed it. So yeah, it's really good. Um, so and you know. Uh, my my main goal with uh, when when we make a new weapon is always to make it enjoyable for people, like make people really excited to get their hands on it. And uh, I want it to feel good. Sometimes that means it it is a bit too good yeah. or it's uh, too easy to use. But um, yeah, we want it to make make it fun, right? We don't want it to we don't want to release something that is boring to to use. So. Yeah. Yeah, C- can I ask a follow-up question there? Because that's, you know, ov- obviously uh, a question we get from the community. Sometimes we release a weapon, we release a new weapon and they feel it's too powerful. But I think, Dan, as you mentioned, we want the weapons to be fun. Um, and Ross, feel free to jump in as well. We also don't want them um, to come in when they're just not powerful enough. So I'd rather we'd rather tone it down afterwards. Is that a... Yeah, yeah, for is, sure. Is that how we usually yeah, feel about it? It's hard to... Sorry, just, Ross, go ahead. I'd say like, uh, it's really tricky when you... It's actually, it's... Yeah, when, when the stats can help us here, like, I think it's fair to say that if you release something and it feels weak, it's really difficult to come back from that. Um, and so I don't... Like, we never... We never like sit there and and say like this thing is gonna be OP. Um, what we do is say like, does this feel viable? Like, does it feel fun to use? And then the next step is okay. Well, we know that we're gonna probably tweak the newest things that come in. So yeah, it's a tricky balance. Yeah. And uh yeah. And then again, you know, if you think of like how um season six map changed the meta and put stresses on different elements of the game, like, you know, suddenly shotguns. Um we, we didn't we didn't tweak or change those. So yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one. Trickier for Adan to, <laughs> yeah, to deal but, with that yeah. pressure. I, th- I think um, I think we actually talked about that like earlier in the podcast. Everything we do impacts the content, all the content. So for yeah, you mentioned redacted. Of course, people are going to use shotguns in that in that map, um, which you know are weapons that maybe they didn't use as much before in other maps. So suddenly they find out like, hey. These are maybe actually way too strong now that we use them a lot. Uh-huh. Um, this is yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like Ross said, it's it's way harder to bring a weapon back into being relevant and being used. Like if you release it and people don't like yep. it, it, it's gonna lose a lot of popularity. And yeah, it's it's really hard. And ultimately, yep. at least for me, the goal is for people to use as many different weapons as possible. I just want people to to yep. use all of them. Uh, but I mean, we try to make the new map and the new weapons as compatible as possible, right? Yep. Um, it doesn't really dictate the whole design of the weapon, but thinking about redacted, the, the G428, for example, is like, it's a DMR, like it can be good in this map. Whereas other DMRs are going to be harder to use. Then the balance is a bit, you know, it's a different question. You can miss that, but the intention is to have them work well in the, in the maps. Okay, and um, some of the other changes. Um, I think that was a, a start of the, the new weapons. Um, what else did we yeah, do? Yeah, the the, the old year? weapon attachments. Um, we talked about uh, about that a little bit, but um, a bit. Yep. I uh, maybe maybe a summary. I guess there. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more insider info. I guess uh, on how it went and what it what it was for us. Um, I worked on the SMGs and the LMGs uh, part of it. Um, and I feel like, well, I didn't work on the AR so much, so I don't know how much they were off in, in a lot of these things, but the SMGs and the LMGs, mm-hmm. 
um, a lot of the data, you know, it has been through many different generations and from a, a different game. So you have to adapt um, the recoil, the dispersion, the damage, uh, the bullet speed, the ADS speed, and a lot of different things. So that was a lot of work kind of behind the scenes. Uh, but I think uh, if you look at the opinion on on these they're now like the people use them a lot more um than before they're still not perfect i guess uh and i know that some people were a bit disappointed with the um the variety uh, of uh, attachments on some weapons um but we really tried our best to give them as many as possible uh a lot of those uh, a lot of the attachments were limited just by the shape of the weapon, the compatibility with it. Yeah, I, f- so. I, I, f- I think just a, a, a very simple summary there is some of the assessments literally just did not fit. Exactly. Like, literally, they did not fit the weapons. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's why we had to, to pick a few um, that would fit, that we could adapt. Um, it's good yeah. context to have for those who... We already aware. took a bit of a liberty with... Uh, the extended magazines being exactly the same sometimes in a <laughs> physical form. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of cases where we really couldn't push it. Um, we just had to not, not give them the attachments, unfortunately. But yeah, I think overall there, that was, that was really good. It added a lot of life into them. Yep. I think so. The, the universal weapon skins as well. Um, you know, the attachments, we changed their, their balancing a bit. So, they, um, to summarize, do we feel they are now competitive with the all-out war for Arsenal, which was our intent? And have we seen um, an increase in their usage? I think so. I think overall they are. I think there's still like, there are things that we can tweak, but just they're, they're more about like normal balance, like a damage curve tweak yep. here and there. Um, in the future, I would like to have other ammo types on them, but... You know, that's my personal want. We'll see uh, if we can get to that. Discussion for another For sure. Yeah. And then let's see what other changes did we have. So we added thermal scopes. Yeah. I wasn't a big part of that, but maybe maybe Ross can talk a lot about that. Yeah, it was um, it was something that we wanted to do earlier, but um, there was some technical issues that were kind of getting in the way of getting it working the way the, the exact kind of way we want it so uh yeah it's it i reckon that um ha- adding the thermals was like a big it kind of felt like um the general intent of the overall weapon roster felt like more complete at that point um and then like once you have Again, like I, I feel like it was getting getting to a point where we felt like, like there's enough, like there's enough uh, meat to chew on. Um, so yeah, thermals were a big part of that. Um, I always use them as well. Yeah, same. <laughs> and then we made a lot of dispersion updates as well. So um, to to many different weapons, but I think maybe we can summarize. You know, just the the overall intent of why we make dispersion changes and some some of the 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 bigger weapon categories we did it for yeah um i yeah the, i mean that change uh, i helped with it but it wasn't completely my decision but i do agree with it i think it was the the right thing to do um and it was a matter of uh, you know after reworking the maps and changing engagement distances um there's more cover uh, in in mid range, and there's a lot more encounters in closer space and so on. Um, and a lot of the weapons were just too accurate, where the dispersion didn't really matter um, in 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 many situations. You could just unload your your full magazine. Yeah, and just, kind of. You know. Yeah, and so okay. that means the TTK overall goes down, and then at some point it kind of becomes too much where feels like you're playing like almost like a simulator. You just pop your head out and you get killed in three tenths of a second, right? From too far away. Okay. Um, yeah. 
which is not fun if you're on the receiving end. It's it's fun if you you know you you take someone down, but if it happens to you all the time, it's we didn't think that was fun or beneficial gameplay yeah. or healthy gameplay. I, I would say. Okay. I think as well, like it was just like um, I mean, I think I think uh, it's a tricky one. So when you're running along and you're going like to a capture point and you get pinged by somebody who's sat on a hill. Uh, with a sniper or even like a DMR, you you check the you know your kill feed. Okay, that's how they killed me. It 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 kind of feels reasonable, but like the issue was that people were being beamed f- with you know SMGs and assault rifles just in ranges that like it just didn't it wasn't feeling right, and it took us a little while to get there with those dispersion changes but i think overall it's it's put us in a a better position i think we're just seeing like like you say like we're just seeing less of this yeah just like being pinged by stuff that you feel like you shouldn't be getting pinged by so it's not it's not that being pinged by someone from you know 300 meters is a bad thing um but it was uh it was silly at points yeah um and that that was and the, the PP problem, now. right? When we remember, remember the PP, <laughs> yeah, it, it was like that thing was yeah. was, was like a laser. lasering people. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but it, it overall, feels better. we feel that's in a good spot now because that's always the the outcome we want. Are we happy? Yeah, I think I happy think year. it feels good to play, right? Um, like that. That's that's ultimately the thing that should drive it. Like you know, you've gone too far when you play, you fire a gun and it doesn't feel right. It feels like it's not a gun anymore. Yep. Um, and it, it was a bit difficult to get there um, because there's, you know, a lot of weapons, a lot of different rate of fires uh, and yeah. the formulas for dispersion are not, it's not just one number. It's like an exponent, an offset, how fast does it decay? Um, another exponent on that. And, you know, it's, it's a tricky formula for, uh, to do like s- changes that are big, small changes are a bit easier, but when you want to really change it, uh, 30% somewhere might be more than 30%, might be less. It's a bit, it's a bit hard. Um, okay. So it requires a lot of testing as well. Yes. Yes. A lot of, uh, and then for all the weapons, just t- so folks have an understanding of how much work goes into making some of those mm-hmm. changes. Yeah. Yeah. And like you say before Ross, uh, in the playtest. You feel one thing, but then in the in the real world, when you're playing 128, for example, and the different situations that we cannot test so much, um, it's it's going to be different. Uh, it's not the same to test the the weapon in the test range in, in my debug level than out in the yep. real world. Um, and I think I mean there's still things that we can look at, things that I would like to explore in how. But it's more like how the mechanic works under the hood, right? Um, how to make it a bit more tangible, maybe like may, make people more aware of their dispersion, um, so they can control it better. That kind of stuff. But it's very vague, and you know, it's it's a bit more like numbers and that kind of stuff that is not so fun. Okay. Um, then we had, of course, the uh, rebalancing of. of, of of multiple weapons, but LMGs as a category is is one that we can. Yeah, talk that, about. that was the, the one that probably we we missed the most uh, at some point with the dispersion changes, just because it's a different type of weapon. Where, yep. like I said, like half a degree doesn't really mean much for an SMG because you're using it at thirty meters. But when you're at one hundred and thirty meters, that half a degree is like huge. So you you. It's easy to look at the numbers and be like, okay, 20% extra, but that actually doesn't really work. You Maybe you just keep the same dispersion, but it works differently at a different range. So that's what we had to really, uh, really look at the engagement distances in the game, look at the data and see, okay, um, it makes more sense to tweak it this way. So that's why, why it took a bit longer to get there. Do you feel good? Are you happy with the current state or should players expect more sweeping changes? I think it's it's not going to change a lot um, in the near future. 
Um, I think it's in a good spot, at least as an LMG user and Joyer, I have, I have a good time now. So I think that's a good bar. Um, that's yep. <laughs> yep. no, but yeah, I, I feel like it's, it's balanced across the, across the, the different, uh, weapon categories. Um, it, for example, that has made the DMRs maybe a bit more popular than they were before. Right. There's a lot more talk about DM7 this, M39 that. Um, so that's kind of like a um, a bit of a domino effect of, of that change. But I think it's a healthy one because it's, again, it's better to have a, a bit more variety, um, more people using different weapons, right? And DMRs were maybe a bit over underused before. Yeah. And I, I think it's interesting you mentioned the domino effect, which is something we called out uh, in the podcast before as well you know when you make change one thing it it impacts the other thing um then we have the, the dmr resurgence um which is a i don't know ex exciting sounding note <laughs> that we made so let's talk let's talk yeah, dmr so, so yeah like i said they're they're back right yep. uh i don't know if uh, they've ever been as popular as they are now um but yeah i think they were like Ross was saying, like you could you could laser people uh, with uh, with a lot of different weapons before in the right circumstances, and the DMRs didn't really have. I mean, they were strong, but they weren't really convenient, right? You could still use them; they're as powerful as they were before, but they weren't really convenient. Mm -hmm. Now it's a bit of a trade-off. Yeah. Like if you want to be stronger. Uh, meet long range. You really want to go the extra mile to to be competitive there, and the DMRs are are a good option. Yeah, I guess you know. Shout out to to, to all the players as well. You know, we were talking about weapons. We talk about a lot of changes. Let us know how you feel. Keep your feedback coming. We read it a lot, <laughs> and we talk about it a lot as well. So keep it coming. Um, then we have a sup suppressor and subsonic um, changes. Yeah, that's a very recent one. Um, and it came a bit like it wasn't something that um, we decided this is what we want to do from the beginning. It was a bit more um, a, a bunch of different things. So first we changed the hit markers. That meant it wasn't really the original idea wasn't really compatible. Also, the, you know, the mechanic where you can't see where you're being hit from, it's not so fun. It can be a bit frustrating, right? It can be, especially if you're a newer player, it's not the best. Um, so if we could give players something in return uh, for removing that, I think that, that that would be healthier. That was kind of the, the beginning of the thought process. And then we look at subsonic ammo and we wanted to boost them together a bit, um, suppressors and some sonic ammo. And so what we had to do was nerf the suppressors by themselves, um, to, to introduce a mechanic to begin with. Um, we were being a bit, uh, conservative there. Um, I wanted to see how people felt with a big change in this case. Like, do you, do you feel like suppressors are still worthy with this? Um, it didn't, you know, we, we shipped redacted at the same time. So that wasn't the best place to test it because distances are so, so small there. But, um, you know, everyone kind of agreed there was too much. Uh, they were not so useful anymore. So we're going to react pretty quickly. We're going to, we're going to change those distances. We're also going to buff the suppressors a bit, uh, heavy suppressors. So they're, yeah, their debuffs are not as strong. And yeah, hopefully we can keep working on that. Yeah. And that's going live in update 6.2 already, yeah. I believe. Which, by the time players listen to this, should be in your hands already. So maybe you've had a chance to play around with the changes already. So let us know how it feels. Okay, so Adon, let's, uh, let's segue into update 6.2 itself, which goes live on December 5. Can you give us a summary of the weapon changes included in that update? 
Yeah, so there are a few balance changes uh, focused mainly on the MCS, um, the E428 and the VHX. So, you know, the, the main sticking points uh, from 6.0. Um, and also we have a, a buff to the heavy suppressors and subsonics, which is pretty straightforward. It's, uh, yeah, it's more, more damage or less damage redu reduction on the heavy suppressors and less bullet speed reduction. Uh, hopefully should should help, uh, especially on snipers, I think. Um, but yeah, looking at the G428, which has been a bit um, a bit of a topic, uh, the main changes are to the standard issue ammo. Uh, with the 20 bullets in the extended mag, it was a bit too much to have two hit kills up to 40 meters, I feel. Uh, so that's going to be the main change. We're going to bring that back, bring it down to 20 meters. Um, which, you know, when you, when you, uh, keep in mind the, the large, the size of the magazine, the fire rate, and, you know, how easy it is to use comparatively, uh, we think that makes sense. We've also added a four hit kill area over 125 meters to the standard issue ammo, which I think, yeah, that definitely makes sense. Um, but... I, I've seen a lot of people worried on Twitter that that ruins the weapon and it makes it unusable. Um, high power ammo is going to stay mainly the same. It's just a minor reduction in the two hit kill range uh, from 50 to 40 meters. Um, I will keep an eye on that and see if, you know, maybe we bring it back up to 50. Uh, maybe we add a four hit kill range to it as well. But for now, that's not going to change much. Um, it's going to feel pretty much the same. Okay. And yeah, we, we tweaked the recoil animations, um, dispersion a little bit, just tweaks to, to make it feel more like it should, it, uh, especially with the XDR hollow, for example, it just felt a little too dead, too rigid and like, um, too easy to use as well. So we've tweaked those uh, settings there should feel a bit more like, um, Closer to the other DMRs. Okay. Um, patch notes go live on December 1, Friday, December 1. So that's where um, everybody will have a full overview of all the changes. And by the time you listen to this, the update is probably already in your hands. So be sure to check out the, the full patch notes for a written overview of all the changes. If you've already played by the time you listen to this, get in touch with us as well. Like, let us know your feedback. How do the changes play out? Like, how, And how do you feel about... You know, gunplay in general. We uh, we had uh, an hour long discussion here, um, and we'd love to hear your feedback in general. Um, any other comments, uh, Don or Ross, on update six point two? Well, there's the some minor tweaks to the VHX. I've seen some people also worried that it's going to ruin the weapon. Don't worry, it's very minor. Give it a try, and yeah, let let me know any feedback you have on that. But it's not really a huge change. It should feel the same, just just be a little more in line um, with the other weapons. And um, the MCS changes also shouldn't shouldn't ruin the weapon. It shouldn't make it uh, push it out of the meta in Redactor or anything. Um, we just want to reduce one hit kills uh, at unfair distances mainly and yep. keep it as powerful as it is but just a little more fair. Um, but do give it a good go because there's a lot of small changes in there to ensure that it's as good as before. And uh, yeah, just let me know what you feel. Awesome. And I think the, uh, like another um, reminder is we talked earlier in the podcast that we want to make smaller incremental changes to the weapons than maybe we've done before. Um, so the impact isn't, immediately as large as you know maybe it has been before and in some cases where we weren't happy with the results so um it should be a better experience going forward uh, when we make weapon changes but let us know your feedback we're curious yeah um which brings us to uh you know before we end the podcast today i would just like to know from both of you like what are your favorite weapon changes we made or make could be even you know the addition of a new weapon um, Ross, from you since launch, maybe. So we've got two years, and Adon, since you joined uh, or or came back on the team as well. Let's let's start with you, Ross. 
Well, uh, it was probably thermals for me. Like, um, it was interesting because we were actually playing around with them for quite some time. So it was you like when you when you're building stuff, like you get this feeling of uh, you play and play tests you see bugs and things, but you play and play test. You kind of get used to like how you set things up in the play test environment. And then you can't then go home and sit down and actually play the thing and use it in the real world. So it, you get this kind of sense of frustration of like, God damn, if I just like had that one thing, I would have been okay. So yeah, when the thermals actually released, it was like, okay, this is, yeah, this is how I actually want to be um, setting up to play the game. Um, apart from that, like I'm an NTW fanboy. Um, I just love the weapon. So um, uh, whenever we make positive tweaks to that, I'm like happy. Which? Uh, no pressure. Which was, <laughs> I think it was super powerful as well at launch, by the way. Wasn't it shooting helicopters? It, yeah, we had, yeah, we had the, um, yeah, that would, yeah, that was an issue. I remember that. You see, you're bringing back, uh, bringing back the nightmares. But, um, no, that was uh, yeah. We put we pulled that back, and then I think we did some tweaks. I forget which season it went out in, but uh, we we made some tweaks just on the on the regular damage side. That uh, yeah, that made me happy. But I I, I love the NTW because it just um, it really changes the way that I'm playing the game. So yeah, those are the big ones for me. Yeah, cool. Um, what about you, Adam? Mm, maybe a bit more boring of an answer. I didn't ship the the cool stuff like the thermals, <laughs> but um, I yeah I, I I think I've mentioned it before. I really enjoy seeing people play with a lot more different weapons, um, and also something that makes me happy because I'm a designer and we are weird is uh, when when you see people really debate, um, really discuss uh, how a weapon is um like you know i think this is op and then someone else comes in and they have an actual discussion and they think they think about it they they really understand what we're trying to do i feel like um that's something really good in the community i really like is a lot of the weapon really try to understand why and how things work um it really helps us um and it feels really good to see uh when when people understand your intention and uh, you know they they look for for the details and and so on. I think any debate actually, like yeah. I, I, I just love it when yeah when you get I every everything good comes from like friction. Uh, so every time you see someone saying saying a statement and then somebody says the opposite, and then you see them getting into a debate and like that's even even if they're debating two negatives, like it's still a debate, and uh, those are things that we often talk about and bring up in in reviews and and things like that it's like uh it, it inspires our own discussions it's cool to see yeah i think uh, you know it's just very important for us as a team to stay in touch with the community but also um keep an eye on you know when they are having good debates discussions about gameplay and changes we're making and uh, we're always tr looking for new opportunities as well to stay in touch and have those discussions uh, with the community, like in the podcast or blogs, or maybe it's inviting folks on our live stream and chatting there. So I guess lastly then, um, let's let's set our mind towards the future for a moment. So before we go in there, I just want to say, when we talk about future, nothing is set in stone. These are just ideas the team might be thinking about so these are not confirmations about what is coming which is a comment we got from the the vehicles podcast so no confirmations here just i want to hear from both of you what are you thinking about or talking about for future changes you may want to make again we're not confirming anything here today but i want to hear uh, your thoughts about where's your mind at for you know what what work is left to do i think for me the the big things are, I, a lot of the discussion that we have is often. Uh, I think I think when we first launched, a lot of the discussion was around like just the, the balance of things, like things fitting within like a role, things feeling useful, being too OP. Um, now I think a lot of the discussion that we have is around the feel of weapons, like how do things feel, um, how readable is something. Um, 
those things are just as important as the raw numbers and but you need to get the balance in order before you can get to that point so we talk a lot more now about like what would we like to do with weapons when it comes to yeah just just the interpretation of firing something of having something you know the, the the gun for me is like um it's no different from like a character in a third person game like it's your connection into the world so the more that you can read that thing the more that you can feel ha- like our intent through the recoil is is super important so those are the things that we start to i think that we're starting to talk about a lot more yeah and i think uh, when when we can really dive into that it's going to make Uh, a pretty big difference i think in the second to second that's what we we want to do we want to really improve the the feel every second that you're playing um uh for me there's also like uh now like like ross says uh now that the balance is uh is in a in a good state we can be a bit more creative um so for me there's like mechanics that i would like to to explore for example uh like something we want to improve is shotgun gameplay right so how can we think a bit outside the box not just think about damage numbers and like pellets and you know the the numbers um but can we introduce new mechanics can we use the stuff that we already have in the game to make it better make it more fair more fun so there are some things there um already like in my head um but yeah like Tom says this is no promise of anything but for sure that's uh, that's something I would love to to explore to be a bit more creative there um and also a pet peeve of mine is uh, something that I would like to improve is outside of the gameplay the way we show um the way we showcase the weapons the way we explain to the player what an attachment does what the weapon is like you know all of that data that we have all of that depth that we have in the gameplay sometimes we're not so good at showing it and sharing it with the player especially if you're a new player or someone that doesn't play a hundred hours every month um it's very tricky to really figure out some stuff so that's something i would really like to improve uh make it more readable and you know more fun to to go into the the menu and customize your weapon like think about it a bit more and yeah have a better time that okay so that's where our minds are at for future changes we may want to make no confirmations again <laughs> um which i guess brings it to the end for today we have cookies but i think we will eat them off camera today sorry folks we're off camera off off voice off recording <laughs> um any final shout outs either if you want to give um before we end well first of all thank you tom for inviting me uh and you know having a chance to to talk to to the players a bit more directly I think everyone that has made it this far it's been a long one um but yeah hope you enjoy having more insight into the things that we do uh yeah and keep giving us your thoughts your feedback it really really makes our life easier thanks to the community you Ross yeah same like community is everything um the more that you talk the more you give us feedback the more we can talk about it ourselves and again like we have a lot of meetings where we try and track community sentiments uh, we bring up even like specific comments the amount of times that i'm like hey like this guy i agree with this guy like that they like the more you that you that you uh put your thoughts out there the more that we can respond to them because ultimately like the the game is for for people playing it so yeah thank you for being as vocal for such a long time now right like live service has been going for quite some time and it's really cool to see the discussions just continue yep um awesome thank you everybody for listening today we hope uh yeah we hope you enjoyed the discussion about weapons and where our minds is at and you know a little bit of context behind the scenes for how we do things we'll be back in the future with more podcast episodes but in the meantime get in touch with us at hashtag inside battlefield on our social channels or podcast at battlefield.com Adon and Ross thank you so much for being here with me today I had a lot of fun 
Hope listeners will have as well. And from all of us here at our Betterfield Studios, stay classy and PTFO. Bye-bye, everybody. See you. See you later. Bye.